book I've come out with since 2005. You know, I've spent many years teaching people about the spiritual war around them, a spiritual war that often manifests in our physical realm. And in this book, I reveal information that has never before been revealed. You know, unless you were someone that knew what it was like back then, how it is now. I detail firsthand information. I talk about heaven, the logistics, the angels, the father, the palace, the throne. I give readers the information that has never been revealed before or taught anywhere. And as you read Lucifer's words, he confirms everything I say and even adds his own perspective. And that's what I wanted readers to see, his perspective, his views. As he recounts and reminisces about the past, he had in heaven before his rebellion and war against it. I talk about the war, what happened. The Bible says nothing new under the sun happens. And that's because everything that he did back then, he's doing now on earth. And he's going to cause, during the coming years, the opening of the gates, bringing the creatures in, unleashing them on everyone at once, worldwide. He's done this before. He did it to the angels in heaven. And so I expose all that. Uh, I talk about the enforcement of the mark, what he calls the candle burning phase. You know, he's done all this before, so it's round two for him. And you can hear about it in his own words. You know, I, I reveal information that the prophets of old and sages of old were very well aware of. But the things that have been repressed from man over the years so that they could block out any and all knowledge about heaven to the people that were living on earth. What they wanted to do was make heaven and God some obscure, faraway place and have people on earth believe that, you know, out of sight, out of mind, basically. That it was a, a myth, a fairy tale, a faraway place. Uh, don't pay attention to that. Just pay attention to the here and now on earth. And so this is how they began to suppress uh, all the kind of information that I reveal in the book. And, and you can hear from Lucifer's own words why and how they did that. You know, people believe that a father just had one son, Yahushua, one begotten son. Well, he was his only begotten son on earth. In heaven, father had 14 kids direct to him. Yasha, which was Yahushua's name in heaven, was the seventh child directly born, created by the father. And so there was, there was 12 girls and two boys. And I reveal this in the book. People have a hard time understanding that Halayel and Yahshua, Yahshua were brothers. Halayel was the sixth son, sixth child created from the father, and, Ye and Yahushua was the seventh. And uh, I reveal all that. Lucifer's name in, Hale uh, in heaven was Halayel. I revealed that in articles I wrote years ago, revealed his true angelic name. And Yahushua was Yasha. Yahushua means God's salvation. People say they have a hard time calling God Yah. Well, God is a title. Yah is God in Hebrew. Shua is salvation. If God's salvation is what Yahushua means. Yasha was his heavenly name. There was no need for salvation in heaven. Yahushua, what Ben David was his earthly name. People want to call him Jesus. That was a Greek made-up name. There was no Jesus Christ in early Jewish history anywhere because he didn't exist. His name was Yahushua ben David. And you start to see just the snowball effect of how mistranslations and truth can be hidden and suppressed and changed over the years so that people then develop uh, preconceived and misconstrued notions about what the truth really is. 
and they have no idea what it is. They have to go by a Greek translation of the KJV that even all of the Christian Jews rejected. And I talk about that in the book. Uh, why they rejected the Torah. They didn't reject the Old Testament and the KJV because of Yahushua. They rejected it because of the way it was changed. You know, they claimed that the Old Testament was written strictly from the Hebrew, but they they changed things. And all of the Jews who stood up to rise against it in anger, back when the KJV came out, were killed to, sh to silence them, to shut them up. And they changed Genesis chapter 1. Uh, they made night, the day sound like it starts at night. Night and day were the first day or whatever. They changed all that, the literal the interpretations of that. They changed the Jewish calendar from solar to lunar. There was a lot of changes they made. They made the laws of the Torah uh, sound like they were so complicated and burdensome nobody could keep them. And, and Lucifer admits that, and he laughs. And it was very much more complicated back in the day. And I tried to explain that in my last show, how much easier it is when you realize most of it, two-thirds of it, didn't pertain to the normal everyday person. It, it pertained to rules and procedures of the temple, of the queens uh, or the kings and the judicial system. didn't pertain to most of the people. But Lucifer and them wanted it to be really complicated, and so that's how they translated the Old Testament. Of course, the New Testament was translated by Shakespeare. And so, thou shalt not, and thou shalt this. You know, the Father doesn't talk like that. Yahushua never talked like that. The Jews didn't talk like that. They were not British English. And so this is, uh, you know, just, it's been one complication after the next on exactly what is the KJV. People want to believe that uh, it was the inspired word of God. I've asked Father about it, and he's told me that his message is in there. His inspired word and message is in there. But to claim that Shakespeare and King James <laughs> were filled by his spirit while they were writing it, come on, folks. Come on. Lucifer, Lucifer changed things. He had his way. And now you're seeing the same thing with the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect is changing words and passages in the Bible. Uh, the whole point of putting it in writing was that so people could memorize it and have the words of the Bible written on their heart, meaning they have it memorized. And so that was the whole point of why the uh, Jewish scri uh, scribes would write scrolls and books and it was the collection of all these different letters that not the Jews put together but the Greeks and the Romans you know it's like I, I posted on my Facebook the other day Mary wasn't Catholic and Jesus wasn't Protestant folks they were Jewish they weren't even Jewish. That term didn't even exist back then. They were Judahites. Uh, so I also talk about, in my book, I talk about how the queens, Lucifer's uh, sisters, had stood up against him, fought against him in heaven. Uh, I talk about the time of the rebellion, uh, everything that was leading up to that. I talk about the 1,000-year war. People think it lasted a day, a week, a month, or whatever, quickly. No, it lasted 1,000 years. Uh, I talk about all the destruction of the heavenly planets at the time, how Lucifer took them over, how the queens destroyed them completely, and then uh, Lucifer went on to destroy them even more. And so a lot of epic information I reveal in this book, Interview with the Devil, uh, I talk about those who followed Lucifer, the, the, the angels at the time who sided with him and rebelled against heaven, the system he set up uh, at the end of the thousand years when he was cast out of heaven, how he uh, established the constellation of Halan, which we know as Orion, and they took that over. I 
talk about Nibiru. I talk about the creation uh, of Earth, the recreation, I should say, of Earth. Lucifer recounts how he corrupted the Garden of Eden, how he seduced Lilith, Adam's first wife, then seduced Eve, Adam's second wife. Talk about the children he had with them, the races that were created and how a fraction of them escapes the flood to repopulate the earth. You know, in this book I talk about what really happened at the Garden of Eden. Lucifer talks about the dinosaurs in the pre-Adamic era and during Adam's era, what was going on. Um, we talk about uh, the angels who fell with him, what happened with all of them, uh, how they uh, expanded, what they became in, in expanded fallen angel states, what they are now. You know, I give the readers an extraordinary look at what our history was, something no one else has ever been able to give because it's the truth and it's from first-hand accounts. I'm the only person on this planet that could have written this book that reveals the information it does because I'm the only one who has this kind of information straight from heaven, straight from the past, with Lucifer directly, and no one else who has this kind of access to him or heaven like I do, folks. I describe the queens, the planets, they rule the heavenly system, the council of heaven that rules over earth. I think, you know, this book is epic. The information revealed is accurate, it's astounding, it's like a missing chapter of Enoch. Uh, people who have read it have been gripped by the information, they couldn't put the book down. There's nothing contrary to the Word of God that's in it. It's in alignment with the Word of God. Just things the Bible historians repress because just as they suppressed Enoch, they've suppressed a lot of truths from being added to the KJB version. And Lucifer admits that and tells us why he did it. And we talked about a lot of things. And so uh, I just think that this book is probably one of the most epic kinds of its ever uh, revealed, and the Father had me reveal it now because we are in the last days. People need to get their hands on what the truth is. Uh, get my heart pumping again here. Uh, so I want to talk about Oh. Let me get my breath back. Physical body just just starts to wear down. I almost said meltdown, and then I had to think, wait a minute. I am not an android. I'm not going to just sit here and melt down, but I am wearing down. So, uh, you know, I, I deal with some of the things. What I want to deal with tonight is a couple of issues that uh, the church has. And, as everybody knows, I typically call the church church dumb, because they're church dumb. They ask the pastors, and if he doesn't know, he gives them an answer that sweeps everything under the rug, and that's what they believe. And uh, that's why the Bible mentions and the Father says that, that truth seekers are a group of their own. You know, if they were of their own, he wouldn't talk about, specifically point them out. As their own special, unique kind of person, there's a truth seeker, a lover of the truth. Because they search for the truth, they seek the truth. You know, one of the biggest misconceptions in the Bible is that angels don't have sex. I've said this before on this show. And they take a, a misconstrued piece of scripture for a group of angels that don't. Or what's it say? A group of angels that, that don't marry or given in marriage and... That's not true. Maybe for some factions of angels, but not all of them. Angels are not robots in heaven any more than they're robot people are robots on earth. There's different ranks, classifications. And and that's some of the kind of unique stuff that that you can see in the book of Revelation that points out the cherubim and the seraphim and 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 I've even talked about some of the different classifications of angels. Uh the ones that are in the palace are, are uh, unique to the palace, the area of the palace. Uh, 
there's just different parts of heaven, folks. There's different ranks, classifications. And this was part of the old heavenly system in that you couldn't buy. There was no money. You couldn't buy rewards in heaven. You earned them. You know, and 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 the whole system was and that was was around earning things and being rewarded for that. There was nothing about you couldn't buy it, and and that was one of the the problems with the whole rebellion in heaven was Lucifer wanted to change that and introduce a structure of money in heaven, which no angel could figure out why we would have to have money because, you know, how awkward is that? Now you got to carry wallets and 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 stuff like that to carry money in and banks and it flopped as you could imagine, but it was all part of his new world order that he wanted to institute in heaven. And it started with changing the economy, the economics. And these angels, the bulk of them, had families. They had homes. They had families. You know, you, you get your basic necessities and needs cared for, but if you want to, if you want a mansion close to the palace and stuff like that, you got to earn all that. That's the, my, my sword as an angel was iron. It was given to me by Father Direct. I mean, you earned that kind of stuff. You rewarded it. My sword alone weighs about 200 pounds and made of pure gold. That's the kind of things you get awarded with. That's your rewards. Uh, but Lucifer wanted to change all that. He's back then known as Haliel. Wanted to, the, so people could buy things. And it, it just did not... You know, even after... Even after the war and, and, and everything, all the queens left their planets and destroyed them, so Lucifer couldn't have them the way they were. <laughs> and uh, so when he took over, there was nothing left to take over. I asked him, so how'd, how'd that go? How'd your little economic system go? And he's like, it didn't. It just all flopped, you know. And I think mean, you figured it would. There was no structure for banking and economy. Of course, now on Earth he has all that set up. He can, he can do it the way he envisioned. He wanted to have it done in heaven, you know, the banking, because the structure here didn't exist back in the in the heavenly days. Uh, but angels do have sex. The thing with uh, angels is that when you marry, you marry for eternity. There's you're like uh, you can, you don't just go. Uh, you you get married by God direct. And when you get married by him direct, there's no divorce, there's no leaving. You, that is your soulmate for life, for eternity. And and the, and the cool thing about it is it really is your soulmate. You really do find that one person that you love and cherish more than life itself. Everything that's like a fairy tale here on Earth is actually real there. And, and that person is your, your better half, your other half. You're, you're, you can't live without them. They're your soulmate. I mean, it's it really is true love. And so... Everything that we consider fairy tales here is actually how it is there. Another thing people don't think, oh, another thing I want to talk about about angels having sex is the fact that if you read in Enoch, you know, if you read the first chapter of Enoch, 200 angels, officers of military armies met on Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is north of Israel. And they have, the UN has a building, a non Herman. Ashtar Command has a, that's basically what the UN thing It's probably the Ashtar, Ashtar Command Temple, whatever. Because that is like an ancient site to them. And so they revere it. Uh, that's where the angels fell. They made a pact. That they would all fall together, so if they all got in trouble, they would all get in trouble together, and they did. But each one of these angels led garrisons of arms, like battalions, you know, of angels that fell with them, because they were the chief officers, and the men respected them. And so when those 200 men fell, they had all their tens of thousands of armies with them, and they all came to earth. Uh, Lucifer had told them that they could have their pick of human women. She could take whatever they wanted. Like he owns Earth. Like it's his to give. And they fell for that. And uh, they did. They they started taking women. You'll read brief accounts of it. Uh, and they weren't 
charming women and asking them to marry them. They were abducting them off the earth. They were raping them. They were kidnapping them. They were abducting them. Uh, tens of thousands of women ended up dying in childbirth because they just couldn't give birth to these giants that were being born. Most women, there was a huge percentage of women that actually died in childbirth. The ones that uh, 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 made it, most of the babies would make it. They would kill the human to save the the giant being born, the, the child. And that's why we have so many giants back in the day that, and uh, people call the Nephilim. And then when those giants, and Enoch talks about two brothers, one was the equivalent of 30 feet high, and his brother was 33 feet high. I mean, this is real stuff. And you've seen the skeletons and the archaeologic findings and, and even D.C. admitting that they, they had suppressed and hidden away archaeological findings because they don't want people asking where all these giants come from. We've got the whole serpent mound thing in Ohio and the, and you, you've got giant bones being found all over the world and they try to suppress it and hide it. But then I don't want to have to answer anybody's questions. Uh, but these were the offspring that were born from the... Because in the churches, the standard quo is to say that, that the passage in Genesis is about... Uh, well, what do they say? Cain's, Cain's kids mixing with Seth's or something weird. I don't know, something about Seth, and it's so stupid. Uh, no, the fallen, there were fallen angels falling to earth procreating with human women. They were creating giants. That's who... David kills a giant, Goliath. He was nine and a half feet tall, and he had brothers. There was 20 cities full of giants that Joshua and Caleb had to defeat when the Jews were retaking back Palestine when they left Egypt. Giants were prevalent on earth more so than people have been led to believe. So then what happens is these giants die. And, and they're all over the Old Testament. If you know the names of the races, when they start mentioning all the tribes of the people that lived on the earth, uh, they were giant races. They were men of old, men of renown, almighty men. Those are code-speak terms for giants. So when these giants died... Their spirits became known as demons, what we call demons. They became demons, and so they were judged to roam the earth. So that's what demons do. They they act, they, they, they roam how they're, they're servants of Satan. They roam how uh, they roam earth. They do the bidding of their master Satan, who who, who rules over them. And they're fourth dimensional beings. Anything hell related is the fourth dimension. Okay. Because the churches misconstrue the whole idea between what demons and aliens are. Because most of the churches just, just call demons and aliens the same thing. Everything's a demon. You know, you talk about aliens, other oh, demons. They're demons, they're demons. I'm not one who likes to hype on terminology. But it just gets on my nerves because not only is the terminology wrong, because they're, they're totally different dimensional beings. Demons are fourth dimensional beings, the spirits of the dead and Nephilim. Aliens are fifth dimensional beings. They have physical bodies. They live in space. They live above the earth, on the earth, below the earth, and under underground cities, underground bases. You can't see them unless they manifest in this realm. They can do so if they want to. They're fifth dimensional beings, like the same thing as a, a the dimension as angels are in. Angels are fifth and higher. Uh, but they're not dead. They're not spirits of anything. They're themselves. They're races, terrestrial beings. A lot of them are Lewis kids. A lot of them are Lucifer's kids. And then you have everything in between from crossbreeding and beings coming from other universes over into ours. And so 
Mm-hmm. Especially since Lucifer, had, when he was back, when he was Haliel, had dragged them in. They had a CERN Stargate back in the day in on Nibiru. And they pulled in all these creatures from different universes and then unleashed them on heavenly planets to fight against the angels. And all those beings that, that were rounded up, uh, a lot of them took off to hide because the angels were rounding them up to get rid of them. And, you know, Lucifer had taken off to Halean, which is now Orion. And a lot of those beings were left over. And so they also found their own places in the remote parts of our galaxy to inhabit. And so they're not the same, they're not the same beings. They're not even in the same dimension. Tall greys, small greys, those aren't demons, those are greys. Those are terrestrial beings. They're aliens. They're not dead. They're not anybody's spirit from when they died. They do die after about a thousand years or whatever, but they're not demons. Demons are the spirits of the giants, the dead Nephilim. Let's talk a little bit about that on Dan Watt's show Saturday night. Another misconception from people is that, uh, because I, I, I'm just an email with somebody, people want you to handhold them. And I, can't, I don't have time to handhold people. I don't have time to sit and answer someone's millions of questions who I don't even know, who doesn't support this ministry. People just send you emails with a million questions and expect you to be their research teacher. You know, I don't have time for that. Go to my websites. I have books, I have websites, I have radio shows. But you realize just how church dumb people are. Like, they don't believe Lucifer or Satan can have sex. Really? (laughs) Really? He seduced Lilith. He seduced Eve. They had Cain. You ask anybody in Freemasonry today who their father is, they'll tell you it's Cain. They're children and sons of Cain. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, all the the New World Order elitists, the bloodlines of reptilians. Yeah, they all hail from the lines of Cain. And they're proud of it. But the church rejects it. Churches don't even exist. That's why they're all so dumb. they got to wake up, learn what the truth is, because it's going to bite you in the butt here real quick. When you don't know who your enemies are and what you're fighting, that's how you get conquered. You know, the church has put us to sleep. Don't watch the X-Files. That's not good for your spirit. Don't watch those creepy movies and the scary movies. And and going to movies, period. I I mean, I grew up Baptist, but I I never walked in my first movie theater until I was in college. There was no movies. They hide you from the world. That does not do you a bit of good. Because hiding you from the world means you don't even know what the world is. How do you, you know, you don't even, you don't know what the, what, what's going on. I would rather know what's going on and make my own decisions based on what, on knowledge than not know what's going on and have to deal in ignorance all the time. It has nothing to do with protecting your spirit. That's how your enemies win over you, because you're sleeping and you're not paying attention. That's what they've done to the churches. They put them to sleep. Then the wolves came in, took over the government, and, and where were the churches to prevent the wolves from taking over? Asleep. That's why the wolves are over the churches. To put the sheep will asleep. And they do it good. Most of them don't even teach about private prophecy. Most, most most people don't even understand Bible prophecy. I, you know, I could care less what Mandela effect was to do to the KJV. I know it. Because when I was young, I studied the Bible. I've probably read it a thousand times. So the Mandela effect can play and change it all at once. I know what it said. 
How many people actually ever read it? And then they want to tell you what it says. That's what that's what always gets me. You want to tell me something? <laughs> something I've studied my entire life? That's not the typical book, folks. It's not the typical book. I, 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 I reveal heaven. I expose hell. I'll tell you about all the characters involved. People involved. Angels involved. What Lucifer does in the background. You know, especially for the church crowd. Oh, Satan's attacking me today. Well, you know, what's one of his lesser minions attacking you? Not him directly. Him. Everything's Satan to them. Everything's Satan. So when you start to wake up and learn how things are ranked and classified, then you have a better handle of what you're dealing with. Now you, you, you can put a little, the lowest ranking demon in hell after a Christian, and most of them whimper and run. Most Christians don't know the power they have in the name of Yeshua. Now, they want you to get into the witchcraft part of it and the voodoo and start pleading the blood and all that. That's just total witchcraft. I asked Father about it. He hates it. It's witchcraft, he said. He don't plead the blood. The power is in his name. How much blood of his do you think you're going to throw around and toss at somebody? I plead the blood. I cast the blood of Jesus on you, blah, blah, blah. It's witchcraft. Just like the the Catholic doctrine of transubstantiation, where they think they're chewing Christ all over. You know, every week they think they're chewing his body. They think it, his body literally becomes flesh when they chew that cracker in Catholic masses. That makes them cannibals. We took communion in church in remembrance of his sacrifice for us. People take it a mile farther into witchcraft and voodoo and cannibalism. Be careful what you're doing, folks. Wow, the churches don't think you're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit unless you're speaking in demonic tongues. He hates that, too. He doesn't need you to speak in gibberish to him. That is not a Holy Spirit language. That is a demonic language. And most of these people who think that they're so full of the Holy Spirit and are speaking in tongues, they're cursing him. They're cursing him. And they think they're being all righteous and holy. And they got something over on everybody else because nobody else is speaking in their demonic gibberish. Wake up, folks. The difference between the Church of Philadelphia and the other six churches in, in, in Turkey at the time, they're found without guile. What's guile? It's witchcraft. They're found without witchcraft. They're not... Bleeding, playing with blood, cannibalizing his flesh. They're not involved with apostate garbage. And look at all the churches today involved with apostate garbage. And they're certainly not sprinkling fairy financial dust around on people. These guys will come up with anything to keep people distracted on apostasies and garbage. What's the Father say? Come back to me. It's a message to the world. Come back to me. Because so many have so far away from him. If Yeshua wasn't a Protestant, he didn't celebrate Christmas trees, he didn't fill up Easter eggs and, and have Easter egg hunts. Come on, folks. If you can't see that there's two different messiahs being taught in the New Testament, then you've never sat down to read the New Testament, have you? Because there's no way that you can read the New Testament and not see that the apostles taught about Yahushua. And Paul introduced a different messiah, a different gospel. Paul's Followers were called Christians. Paul's followers. It tells you that there was two groups. 
that sprung up in the day. There was the apostles and the Judahites, because that's what they went by, the Judahites. And then there was Paul and the Christians. And Paul and the Christians had their own beliefs. They sprung up their own doctrines, their own beliefs, based on Paul's divine revelations. And they were two different established groups back in the day. And so what they did was threw the church into 300 years of persecutions to get rid of all the Judahites so that the dominant form of religion of the time could spring up from Paul and his Christianity. And that's what we have today. Paul and his Christianity. We need to get back to what the truth is with Yahushua and the apostles and the things that they taught. Get away from the Pauline Christianity. And you know what happens when you do that? All of a sudden things aren't so disruptive, chaotic, at war. When you, when you, when you start to read the New Testament and you read one book after the next, it is a chaotic mess. Most people can't even do it. To shut off all happy, read Matthew. I love Matthew. That's my favorite book. It's all most words in red. It's all you sure. Got a red letter edition. Matthew and John, my favorite books. John was an apostle. Luke was not. Mark was not. Timothy was not. Those were Paul's followers. Get back to the Judahite way. Yahushua was away. Walk away from the Pauline Christianity. And the reason why so many of them rise up in such viciousness and hatred against me is because the government needs it for the last days. Because they stood up Paul, who was a government agent of the day, sabotaged, infiltrated, took over it as a business. He's just like another Benny Hinn. Him and Benny Hinn would be great buddies today. And he pounded them into civil civil authority submission, sub, sub, submission to authority. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, the government wouldn't be coming after you if you weren't a criminal and doing something wrong, you know. That's what Paul would say. Really? What did Yahushua would do? What'd he do? They, they, they beat and killed and sacrificed an innocent man. But not according to Paul. According to Paul, the government wouldn't have beat Yeshua if he wasn't hadn't done something wrong. If he wasn't a criminal, he wouldn't have been hurt and harmed and killed. Paul is so blasphemous, all you want to do is backhand him and slap him upside the head. And yet Christians hang on his every word. And they're the biggest supporters of Israel today. You know what's in Israel today? A bunch of baby raping pedophile, blood-drinking Satanists. Have you ever read the Talmud? Have you ever read any articles about the Talmud? What's in the Talmud? They don't preach the Torah in Israel. They preach the Talmud. And the Talmud is a collection of the biggest satanic filth writings on the planet next to the satanic Bible itself. And the Talmud who they call Yeshua, they call Jesus Yeshua, they claim he's burning in hot crap in hell. And these are the people the churches are supporting today. Hello? Shame on you. Why could you support Satanists, Netanyahus, and all them who believe this kind of garbage? And you're sending them your support, emotional and physical support. Because people are trained to believe that they need to be patriotic and support Zionism, Jerusalem. Well, Zionism is a political agenda. It has nothing to do with Israel and Jerusalem. Zionism is politics. Zionism is another word for New World Order. So people don't know the language speak. So they blindly go along with what their Mason pastors tell them. 
by sending your tithes and offerings and your, oh, your emotional, physical support to Israel today, you're supporting the ones, the Satanists who control it. And they're the biggest bunch of scumbags on the planet. They rape, they kill. It was the Rabbi Finkelstein who exposed the fact that what they do with all these, these bodies, when they're done raping and killing them, they grind them up and put them in our meat supply. Hello. Yes, let's spend, let's send our financial support to Jerusalem today, folks. Are you serious? People need to rise up and realize you've been had. You've been played. Even Lucifer doesn't even like the Middle East. He already owns it all. He says it in his own words. They're all ours. They're all his. His eyes are on America. They're not on Europe. They're not on Australia. They're not on Canada. They're on America. Why? Because that's where God's light is. The most of the light in the world is. See, there ain't everybody. There's a huge contingency of Christians here that, that, that aren't stuck in these Pauline churches that aren't his. Lucifer could just about claim everyone in Pauline churches is his. People have been leaving the churches for years, staying faithful to the Most High. Because when you pray and you ask for the truth in all things, he leads you out of the churches because he's not in them. Read the book of the Church of Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3. He says he's not in the churches. They're rich and in need of nothing. He's standing on the outside of the door. He's not welcome in them. They want the fake Jesus in their churches today. The fake Paul Messiah. Not the real one. Not Yahushua Ben David. And we're warriors. We're tough. We go after the strongholds of Satan to tear them down. We're not, we're not singers. We're warriors. We're doers. See, in Paul's church, in, in, in the lazy, lazy grace, couch potato churches of Paul today, all you have to do is say a prayer of salvation and then do nothing. <laughs> James says, faith without works is dead. Who are you going to follow? Satan, snake, Paul, or James, the brother of Jesus, Yahushua? No, you can't earn your salvation. It's already been granted to you. All you have to do is accept it. But you need to show that the fruits of your life who you honor, who you follow. The Old Testament prophets spend a large amount of time talking about last day's Babylon. And within their writings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, talk about how the citizens of America are rounded up and put into FEMA camps. They round up their own citizens and imprison and enslave them. That's one of the reasons Father destroys Babylon in an hour, which is a phase of time. So the watchmen screaming and standing on the walls, warning about FEMA camps and roundups and martial law, it's very prophetic. It's not just a political agenda, it's prophecy. Does the Bible say that you have to blindly be taken and killed in these camps? No. We have a right to bear arms, to defend our lives and our families, defend yourself against a tyrannical government. Those are our rights. Then you have the, the bulk of Pauline Christianity in America that says, we're not going to be here. We're going to be raptured. <laughs> So when the soldiers come knocking down their doors, they're not prepared to defend themselves. They'll be hauled off to the camps. Judgment starts in the house of God first. They're not going to be going to the hood rats and everybody first. They're going to come to the church people. Judgment starts in the house of God first. And if you're a Yahushua Ben David Bible-believing person, then you have no right to be involved with hate groups. You cannot call yourself 
a disciple or follower of the fathers and be involved in hate. You're kidding yourself. Get out of the hate groups. Don't get sucked into the political agendas. You have brothers and sisters, and guess what? It don't matter what race they are, what color they are, what color their eyes are, what kind of bloodline they are. There is no hate in the kingdom of heaven. Get out of the hate. So many people get sucked into that stuff. Makes my blood boil. And all they want to do is argue skin colors and bloodlines and blah, blah, blah. None of that makes a bit of difference. Under the new covenant, new covenant of the New Testament, the Father's salvation was open to all. There was no longer anything bloodline related. But just as it was back then, it is today. If you want to be a part of His, His kingdom, you need to adopt His ways and follow His ways. That's never changed. That was the same in the Old Testament. That was the same in the New Testament. If you wanted to be adopted. The, but the the Jewish religion, the Jewish ways, you had to become one of them. That was adopt his teachings and his ways. That's the same way today, where you adopt his teachings and his ways. And so many refuse to. They have their own teachings and their own ways and their own customs. They want to put up their Christmas trees and pet their Easter bunnies. They don't want to follow his appointed times and feasts that he established with mankind. It was his calendar for his people. And he has appointed times and feasts. That was his authority to set his calendar over his people. And today's Christians are so bold and arrogant, they think, oh, I don't have to do that. That's over with. <laughs> That's over with. You don't have to do that anymore. Really? What happens in the millennial reign when David's ruling from Jerusalem and we're all back to the celebrating the appointed times and feasts? Because it never changed. It never stopped. What changed was people got stupid and started following and worshiping after Paul's Messiah that he presented to the people, his Jesus, his new gospel that he brought unto them with his divine revelations. Until they had to spend a thousand years of millennial reign reteaching people the real truths of Yahushua. And getting back to his ways. Get out of your witchcrafts. And get back to the Father. And it doesn't happen overnight. I've been trying to celebrate Passover for about 14 years now. And I still ain't got all the bells and whistles right. But you know what? It's not, it's not the aesthetics. The aesthetics, it's the intent of your heart. That's all he cares about. I don't care about how grand you do it. As long as you do it. As long as you're thinking about it. As long as you're trying to do some, putting some kind of effort in. Effort that shows your heart. It's never too late to do what's right. But we are going to run out of time. The biggest challenge for a lot of you this year will not to be put up a, a Christmas tree. Set your foot down and say no. That's a huge one for most people. Jeremiah said not to be as the pagans are. Anyway, and yeah, you could read that in Jeremiah 10 where he talked about how the pagans cut down Christmas trees and decorate them. And he's admonishing you, don't be like them, don't do that. And what do the churches do today? They put them up in their churches. Slap in the face to the prophets. Anyway, folks, time's out. I'm on being kicked off out of here already. So, uh, I will be back next week. Meanwhile, for those interested, you can get my book, Interview with the Devil, at Amazon.com. It's paperback or ebook download. Also have videos on it where I reveal conversations with Lucifer that for free on my uh, my YouTube channel. Also on Twitter and I'm on Facebook. Just look up my name, Sherry Schreiner. Till next week, everybody. God bless. <laughs>